All right, another podcast from the Michigan Institute of Athletics in Brighton, Michigan. It's going to be a stellar podcast today. I'm sitting across the table from a legend uh, right before I introduce him and we get into the podcast. Um, I want to shout out VetLife. VetLife is a 501c3 nonprofit company. It's a company of veterans for veterans. Every veteran faces difficulty transitioning from active duty back to civilian life, and VetLife is there to ease that transition. If you want to reach out to VetLife, you may do so, do so through Instagram or Facebook or check out their website at vetlifetoday.org. Uh, so without further ado, I want to introduce Darren McCarty, uh, Detroit Red Wings, uh, decade and a half plus in the NHL as manager Nick. Um, we're going to be doing a killer podcast today. Um, but before we get into any of the nitty gritty, which I think the average fan will want to ask you, I want to take it all the way back. I want to know. Who was Darren as a young kid? You know, where were you born? Where were you raised? You know, were you big into sports as a kid? Did you look at yourself as, you know, I'm going to be one of those elite people one day? Kind of like build us through that story because I think it's fascinating the type of people that can stretch the envelope in life and really become a level of success that most never obtain. And then I want to kind of get through, you know, your your days in the league and we'll move forward. Absolutely, James. Uh, First of all, thank you uh, for having Nick and I here. Um grind time family slash <coughs> operation valhalla that's uh wherever i go or he goes that's where we go and i think the vet life and our buddy ronnie uh, cyrus who's sitting in here right now um it's so important and we'll get into that as far as the transition but for me i was born uh april 1st 1972 uh, a couple things about that birth date yes uh, i'm the most powerful aries uh red is my power color go figure um, and I was born on the first day of Hash Bash in Ann Arbor, right? On the day of the first one. So that will explain things further into uh, my path. But born in Burnaby, British Columbia, being Canadian. Uh, my parents divorced when I was six months old. Um, but I moved back to a town um, named called Woodsley, which is in uh, just outside of Windsor. And my, I lived with my grandparents. My mom remarried when I was five. I was adopted by my stepdad, Craig. So that's where the McCarty name comes from. My birth name is actually Frank Hardy. Uh Not a lot of people know that. But uh, once I took the McCarty name, and as uh, Craig did, where I tell everybody, you know, you can't choose your blood, but you can choose your family. And, and it doesn't it take... Uh, it takes a village to raise. So sometimes, like, I w- I'm a product of a, of a stepfather, and I think it's important that I'm a stepfather myself, and it's, I think it's a, important in, um, in people's lives for me. And you ask the question, um, you know, I'm, uh, I've been the way that I've always have been. I put my mind to something, and I will accomplish it. You know, I'm one of those that I believe that you can accomplish anything you want you just have to put your priorities in order and you have to sacrifice. It's hard work and sacrifice. What are you willing to do? So growing up, ever you go back to my sixth grade yearbook, I was going to be an NHL hockey player. And I wasn't the most talented, but I worked the hardest. And I was a kid that would rollerblade five miles and in Leamington's on Lake Erie, I'd rollerblade five miles to the, to the dock and back from my house and stuff. And they'd see, you know, you 40 years ago, you know, people remember me be this kid going through town, but it was whatever it took. And I wasn't going to be denied because if you told me, if I said, what does it take to play in the NHL? And you said, well, you see that 10 foot cement wall there? If you get through it, you can play. I don't know. I'm going to get through it, but I don't know if I'm going to play probably not next year. Might be 20 years, but I'm going to get through it. So if you tell me there's a way to get there, I'm going to get there. I, what rules you- rules don't really have, like I don't the norm I always ask why my biggest question is why why um morally I think you figure right and wrong out but why what makes it tick that's why history is so important that's why um you know fast forward Scotty Bowman who is our the coach but he always little things little things take care of the little things the big things to take care of itself so I've always been motivated that way. I was always told why I wouldn't be able to do something, which always I would do things to shove it up people's rear ends. I mean, I will spite you, and that's where Nick and I both are so compatible and why it works is because we will both cut our heads off to spite 
just if it means because my word and my bond to my higher power and in the mirror is I know who I am. And it took me a long time to get there because I tell everybody since I was 10 years old, I knew the hockey player that I was. When I was 15, I was told that to play in the NHL, you got to do something 99.9% better than anybody else. And for me, it was going to be playing physical and fighting. Perfect. Let's go. First year in every league, just fight, be physical, work on your skills, go to skating, do all what I, I did it. I did it. I wasn't going to be denied. And if I was going to be denied, I was going to lay it all on the line because I can lay it all on the line and not come out on top in a victory, but be successful. Right. And then just move on. And then, you know, so, I mean, I, I wish 19 year old Darren knew all this. The 49 does. Well, I was going to say, man, you are speaking facts to any coach, to any professional athlete. You're saying the things that are the common denominators among successful people. But where did it come from for you? Were you just born that way? Do you think the struggles in your life, where did you find that type of, I can, because I can see the intensity think, in your eyes to this yeah, day when a, you speak about it. It's abandonment this. issues, right? I have abandonment, I have abandonment issues that go, and this is through, listen, four rehabs, million dollars by the league, just because you might not get the sobriety by not drinking, the education is there. All the education I have from all those therapies, because like I said, I put myself all in to whatever I do. So my recovery I was all in too. Is it the fact that I needed, like a lot of people or whatever, to let the cannabis plant help me in a lot of the mental stuff? Now, you mentioned before, what, what was it was always... Because I was always told why I couldn't. And and I never believed that. And so my why I was able to do it, and I don't know if a lot of people are different. The bottom line is, what have you put in to get out? So it's hard work, right? And it's finding those people that show you how to work smarter, not harder. But the thing is, that I, and I say this to this day, is I'm not a religious person. You know, I grew up in Leamington, which is a melting pot. So, I mean, one weekend I go to church and one weekend I go to Catholic church and one weekend I go to synagogue and one weekend I go here, there, everywhere. It wouldn't matter, right? So it was just like when I tell somebody about the fifth or sixth thing, I look at a person is what color they are. What, right? You're either a good person or you're not a good person, right? So it's it's I've been surrounded by people that have seen along the way and have pushed me guys like Brian drum guys like Mike Clem Max or fool when I was younger and stuff like that into the guys that you know the names the, the Steve Eisermans the Scotty Bowmans the Shanahan's the coffees the Cicerelli's all those guys to the grind line and stuff so for me it was all but it was always it was never money it was always it, and then it got to be because when I knew who I was as a player before I ever knew as a person, and I probably would say by 45 years, right, where I knew who I was to everybody else as DMAC, as the hockey player, as the, the, that off the what you were going to get on the ice to be that team. But that was me 100% all the time. I couldn't turn it off, didn't know how to turn it off, didn't know any other way because it was always go, go, go because the minute I stopped, somebody would take it away. Or... That, or I was the one that, man, I was the one that made it out. I was the one that got it. I got my buddies that I grew up with that are still working, doing this and that. I can't turn this opportunity down. I know it's a bad decision, but the story is going to be too good. And if I go home without a story, that's worse going to the boys because, you know, Jimmy's got to go punch in at 7 a.m. And he's just waiting for that Friday night story when he's going, man. I just love when you come back and tell us stories, bro. So, I mean, there's a there's that sort of thing, too. And when you can't separate reality from celebrity to different things, then it leads you down a different different way. And, then, and that's just, you know, a lot of things. So it can go to to being the person, the father, the, the husband, the brother, the, all the son, all these different things until you can have that relationship bottom line with that person in the mirror and don't lie to him. And to me, it took me so long, but, but the motivation is there. The motivation is still there even more the fire that I have to accomplish things. But here's the difference. Now, Darren McCarty or DMAC has Darren McCarty and he has 
Nick Antonucci, and he has Grind Time family. And like I was telling you before, the difference is I have so many things going, but what I have is somebody to help direct my energy towards working smarter, not harder now. So maybe the concrete wall is still there, but he goes, you know, you might be able to climb that instead of having to run through it. Or maybe there's a way around it. So you're, you, I mean, you, you'll always have that fire. You'll have that spark that propelled you to be the man that you are. It doesn't have to be concrete anymore, bro. Exactly. But it's, you know it's, what? It's, what it's, if it doesn't have to be it's hard? It's drywall. Yeah. What right. if I can just get through this thing with the correct actions based on my brand and go to the next level? Absolutely. So let's talk a little bit about you break through, you get signed in the NHL. You're that young kid from, it sounds like very humble beginnings. Oh, yeah. You're a kid that could have easily stacked the things upon yourself and said, well, the reason I'm not successful is because of this, you know, origin story that I have. And you did the opposite. You were like, man, I'm going to have so much fire. You better tell me why I can't. And then I'm not going to believe you. and I'm going to do it anyway. Well, you get that, right? hundred percent, man. hundred yeah. percent. And, and no one in, in the best thing about where the correlation to the MMA and, and even so to the military to lack, like in the, ours where sport yeah but you can get hurt and stuff like these guys can get killed every day when you're when your motivation is to stay alive you know and i get it where there's guys that i fought where my motivation was to stay alive but i didn't honestly think when i dropped the gloves i would die right you know what i'm saying so there's a perspective there to be able to to be fearless Right, you know, into that aspect, and I think that it's 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 all where your energies go, and and I, it's all who you surround yourself with. I heard something the other day, which is important, and I don't know, Ronnie, did you tell me this? Ronnie might have told me this, but he said that five people that you, the five most people that you surround yourself with, or you it, that you will have the same habits as them, whether it's and and that never really. I think did you tell me that the other you did at the golf course. And, and I was like, man, let's look at that because, and it's all about, right? It's not hiding from some of the things where we stepped in crap and when we've fallen down and hurt ourselves, it's rec recognizing that's not who we really are or what we wanted to be. We're human beings. We make mistakes. Don't make the same ones twice if it matters. And even to recognize that shows personal progress because you're saying, had I known then what I know now, yeah. I wouldn't do the same things. So it shows the evolution. But I'm different though because I wouldn't want it any other way. I just would have wanted God to let me know I would have survived through it like a lot of us would because I couldn't do it the other way because I couldn't have been that guy. Absolutely. I couldn't have had, I, couldn't have, I, us, I wouldn't right? have four cups, I don't think. Man, our stories shape us. The man that I am is because of just as much because of the bad that happened to me in life as the good. Absolutely. You know what I mean? And if we if we hadn't had that bad, we probably would be a fraction of the people that we are nowadays. I, I relate to that well a thousand said. percent. So when you make this jump and you go from this small town kid that a lot of people could have counted out to being in, in the Going NHL. from making 70 bucks every two weeks to... 10 grand a week. Yeah, right? Yeah, you like know, I want to talk about a difference. I want to talk about the psychological transformation that someone would go through under that setting. You know, were you, first of all, were you in a good psychological state when you got signed in the NHL and then how did you handle going from being Darren McCarty the kids rollerblading down that, you know, some people might have believed in, some people might not have and now all of a sudden you are Darren McCarty, the NHL player that, you know, has broken free from all the molds. That's a that's a psychological jump that most people that don't experience serious success wouldn't understand. Yeah, but I never see I a different situation, right? Because the role that I played for this team was the one I put out into the universe 20 years before I got there. You know, it was like this. I wanted to be Robin to Proby's Batman. You know, I wanted to take away all the, you know, the, the let him fight all the big guys and just to be there and to protect Stevie and Sergey and be that protector guy, but also to chip in and, and be a difference with the way that I played. It so, sounds like genuinely with your heart, you already knew you were going to be an NHL oh yeah. ho hockey player. That's why I already know that when, I, when I'm the Joe Gibbs of weed and wrestling and say whatever you want, that's the next goal. So it takes five, ten years, whatever. I can, I can genuinely see that sitting across the table that without a doubt, there was no other path. You didn't care what was going to happen. You knew, no, I'm going to be in the NHL, regardless of any detractors. And you got it. I can you get, feel you, it. You see where, and and that means a lot because you've been in the same places I've been, whether 
to that self doubt, that whatever, or that belief, and then the fact that whatever that motor running because it's the same thing where you get it too. Because you look at where we're at right now, look at what we went through, look at the manifestation of your basement to people that came over thinking you're a drug dealer because you're running jujitsu out of your basement because you got 40 people that want to run around in your nine, nine tiled mat that nothing and now we're here and we're talking about hot rocks and hot yoga and nick's put in a pilates studio or something i don't know what the hell he's talking about but same thing same thing so when two guys are sitting across from each other four guys in the same room that aren't just talk about it but be about it right isn't it refreshing to know and then so my whole thing is what his what nick's responsibility is to collect me people like you like Ronnie, and we just keep collecting. And you know what? Because th there's 50 people, right, that I don't know that you already have that I need to know, right, because of the people. What do we uh, – here, I'll let Nick talk. Nick, what do, what do we always say? We, d When you come to us, what it's are not, we investing? It's not the what, it's the who, right? Not, so not, people come different, different opportunities, different, hey, I got this idea. Well, let's figure out who you are first. Because, like he was saying before about cutting off our head to spider, like, we don't, we don't care. So if you're just not that, if you're not a good person, not genuine, not real, you just don't make the cut. It's this weird kind of networking, real family type, oh, you do this? I got a guy who does this. Why don't you guys talk? And it's really kind of collecting those people. You're really building the right people. You don't just want people. 100%. You're trying to establish the correct team that matches the vision and the brand of what you're going to generate. So Absolutely. that when you, yeah, exactly. That makes sense to me a hundred percent. And actually, you know what? I'm going to have the, have you pulled the mic a little bit more in between you two, because sure. I'm, I'm getting such strong audio from well, Darren. How could you possibly get strong I'm, audio? I'm from into oh yeah. I'm going to have to tune him down, but I love that passion. I actually have something that I say to my professional athletes that you are the embodiment of Darren. And I tell them you almost, almost have to be delusionally competent. Like you have to, regardless of what your brain tries to tell you, if you are delusionally competent that I am going to achieve my dreams, those are the people that do it. Listen, yeah. James. You're the embodiment of it. It's not a lie if they believe it. 100%. <laughs> George Costanza. Nice. There it is. Nice. That's it, right? Not a sci-fi. No, you have to because, and, 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 and getting back, and I think I was making this point and I got off topic, my relationship with my higher power with God has been hotline since I've been five years old because of being, it goes back to abandonment. So I've always, and I never understood Father, Son, Holy Spirit stuff. I understood one guy, and if I want to talk to him, I pick up my phone and I go, hey, God, it's Darren here. Yeah, what's up, kid? You know, like this. And if you do not think, right, that, and then this is my experience from looking at my life, the stuff that not only I've accomplished, but the things that have He's kept me alive from stupidity. Like, so anybody who's out there that also believes that there's something greater than yourself, whatever you want to call it, right? That, that it's my faith in that. And I, and I double down to that fact and I see it more now because um, if Nick's my right hand, my left hand, who's with me all the time, his name's Aaron. Now his story is this as incredible as anybody because he comes white kid from the hood in Flint that has made himself. I always ask him, what do you mean by that? But the whole thing, him and I, before COVID, went to Israel with the Russian Five movie, right? I got to experience uh, the Great Wall. I actually got this uh, tattooed in the uh, 23 generations. I got it old school picked in. Yeah, and uh, so the whole thing is if you, and to come home and to understand the reception of the message, Right where it's out there, it's always been there, but it's how you receive the message. And you don't have to let, you just got to believe in yourself. And what are you willing to do? And sometimes you got to understand that you might want to do it and you put everything into it and it doesn't happen, then it's not meant to be, right? But what did you learn? Because it's hidden in there. There's always secrets to what that is supposed to lead you to. Man, I like it. Les Brown is one of my favorite motivational speakers, and he says, what you become in the process is more important than the dream. He's great. Gary, him and Gary V. Man, that's huge. Gary, Gary, Gary Vandercheck, I, I encourage, and just because it's to question, it's, as long as you can answer your own why, good, bad, or indifferent, you got a million dollars, and you want to go to Vegas and blow it. Well, that's if you know that you're taking and that's what you want to do. That's your right as a human being. 
But I would get a good group around you to try to make sure that, you know, those. Well, I'm hoping you're worth a billion. Right. Do you know what I'm saying? It's all it's all relative. Absolutely. So I want to talk a little bit about your time in the league and then we're going to transition to like, you know, post NHL. When you were in the league and you're making a ton of money and you're on television and, you know, you're, uh, you know, a national hero. I mean, kids in this country grow up looking up to baseball players, football players, NHL. And I could see in your eyes, you almost like don't want to accept that responsibility. Yeah, I don't but, know national. But, but, but no, I, to countless people, you are one of those people that some little kid is dreaming going, could I be that guy? You'll appreciate this. And this happened a couple weeks ago. And it was a, just a simple tweet. And it put things into perspective, which made me so proud. I told Nick, is somebody sent me a tweet and said, yeah, me and my buddies are 31 years old or 35, two years old, and we're out in Vegas celebrating my bachelor party. And we just wanted to say, thanks, DMAC, for not letting us grow up to be pussies. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, you know what? You're welcome. Because that's, you know, and you, and you go wheelhouse where that is. Because 24 years ago was March 26, 97, which I call Red Wing D-Day, where I turtled the Mew and then scored the overtime winner because at the end of the game it was a proverbial, it's going to be all right, don't know what it means, but it's going to be all right. And we win four cups since then, and Stevie's back, so it's just a matter of time. But it's it's the fact that everybody, doesn't matter how old you were, man, woman, child, and wing-wheeled nation in the whole universe, the proverbial, it's going to be all right, don't know what it means, but it's going to be all right because it's about right and wrong. And that's Detroit, That's where Detroit versus everybody, you know, really solidified because it's the same thing as all your guys fighting out of here and your girls fighting out of here and whatever. There's a pride to be around here. We don't want anything given to us. We'll go, we'll go get our own gosh darn ice cream. You know what I mean? No, it makes sense, man. And so, so during, you'd say your time in the league, like your life outside of the league was in order. Everything went really well during that period of time. Or did you struggle no, with the money dude. and the fame and the success? No, I, I, I'm, I'm the league leader. And if it's it happened to you, it happened to me. Bankruptcies, divorces, um, addictions, all that. Do you think all that's that because of the extreme personality that you had, the same guy that will run through a I, concrete? I think it's the fact that there was one person, D-Mac, when you're the superhero, the never on and off or whatever, and you don't... And, and I'm a different person, right? The, the, like, the, the, there's also... And you understand this, right? When you sacrifice certain things to accomplish certain greatness, you lose basic skills like I don't have a basic understanding or grasp for money right so I got to put people around me that do I don't have because I never had it I don't need it I'll always go make it I'll go get there's always a place to go get more right the my biggest thing was that if I had it everybody had it you know it is like you know like it's one of the it's not not that way anymore where it's more of it like if you're I'll do anything for anybody who would do anything back for me, but there's my list is probably six people right now that, right. You know, whereas opposed to that, I couldn't separate that. But again, I know the why the why is because I didn't like who I was. I couldn't look in that mirror because the things that I did or whatever I had to, it was more of living up to the hype that I put in my own head and not facing different things. So at different times when I went through the rehabs of sobriety, I would face that and things would get better and, and other things, but there was always something missing. And to me, it was the plan. I'd live by the principles of alcohol is synonymous. I've been over to 10,000 hours. I love what it has given me, except I have a hard time because my program needs a garden. If we're all working our own program and there's a reason with the education that we can get CBD, CBN, whatever it is from the plant, with an option not to take pills and have somebody else and and have an option and a conversation that's why I'm, that's that's that out of the four cups beating up lemieux doing anything and all that stuff whatever else the whole purpose in my mind of everything is god put me to be where we're at right now because it's one of these things. I just wish he would have said, you know, wait till you're about 47, 48, 49. It'll start to fig you'll start to figure it out. And I, I don't even need him to say that. I just wish he would have said, don't worry, you'll make it there. 100%, man. Yeah. So I can almost see that DMAC 
had blinders on and the only thing he saw was one perspective of life. Like, I'm going to be the greatest hockey player. I'm going to outwork everybody. I'm going to be this guy. I'm going to be the greatest and I'm going to have the greatest stories. And I'm going to go to the greatest parties and I'm going to do all the greatest it's, things. And I'm going to be the, I'm going to be the larger than life because if I'm going to be that animal on this, I'm going to be that animal because that's what everybody expects from me. That's right. what I mean. It's almost like you could never turn it off. So I then, never wanted to turn it no, off. No, of course, yeah. And well, but that's not of course because here's the whole thing, right? The whole thing, James, is when you want it to stop. It stops. No, no you can't stop it. Oh. You can't, right? That's what we're fighting for everybody else. The option is I don't care what you do, but when you want to make that change, what is the option? Because then it gets into the transition part where either – whether where either it's a commonality of the military and and athletes, where what have you done for me lately? Goodbye. Go figure it out yourself, right? But you can't. T- you, how can you expect me to live seventeen li- years the way that it's supposed to be? And then all of a sudden, it doesn't take. You're still got the fame and fortune, but you don't understand where. What? Who are you? What are you doing? What's important to you? But you had some realization or breakthrough. Maybe that was hitting a rock bottom. Maybe that was having your life or these things fall apart or realizing you know what DMAC might not be best for every situation. You've had some sort of realization that allowed you to step back from the perspective that you lived your life through for such a long period and. And maybe look at it from a different stance or a different light and go, wait a second, maybe there is something else here than just this tunnel vision that I've lived my life through. And it's almost like as if you had lived your life looking through a straw and then someone like disconnected that straw. Uh, and you now make it, you're making it, no, you make it too, uh, you make it sound too cool. But, but <laughs> no, honestly, no, you make the it, man no, that no, sits across you, me. No, no, you make it sound, you make it sound too epiphanistic. No, yeah, it didn't right? happen. No, what it, happens absolutely. is what happens is that when you're an alcoholic or whatever, and you always have a date, right? So it doesn't matter because if you look at my history, I've been sober for years, five, six years at a time, whatever. This then when you don't have the one thing that has kept you from right, because I I teetered the line. Bob Probert showed me that when. He didn't know where the line was, but when he crossed it, he unveiled to me so I could teeter over it and never have it affect my career because the hockey and the guys was the thing that kept me out of myself, to the accountability to them, where I would keep it in check most where I could. Then I lose that. Then I play leaving Las Vegas, get back into my addiction, but don't care. I'm not trying to kill myself, but I'm literally not trying to take care of myself. So my point is, right, and thank God through the love of a woman who, and it's not, you can't do it for anybody else. If that was the case, I would have done it for any one of my kids. It's not about that. It's you got it. What I needed is I needed somebody to love me for me and believe that I was good enough to fight. What, right? I got the fight. The fight's always in here. I put it on vacay. I put it on layaway. I, in fact, said shit. We might not even make it off this this planet this time. It might be next life. Right? 11-11. 2015 is my sobriety date. Because on the 9th, I was in the hospital at 280, or 285 pounds. My blood pressure was 265 over 165. The reason I didn't stroke or heart attack out is because the cannabis I had in my system. It was at that moment, the next day, that I decided to fight because of the caregivers in this state... Um, and add that RSO, Rick Simpson oil, that my wife being a nurse and because of the publicity, she would not detox me at the hospital, send me into anywhere, whatever. We did it in the garage, 10 to 15 grams of Rick Simpson oil, which is RSO, which is a plant in the concentrate form in the most powerful medicinal way, 10 to 15 grams for seven days straight. I was either purging, puking, crapping, or passed out. On the set, halfway through the eighth day, I got up. No physical addiction of alcohol, meaning no date. The fact that I didn't get sick because I drank. I got used to get sick when I didn't drink, and I was beyond that. I got on my knees. I was so grateful. I cried, and then I got mad. Then I got mad because if I got lied to and I got put to this test, and I'm, and I'm not saying it other than I call like I see it. I can. You cannot hurt me as bad as I can hurt myself. And I can, you know, there's no black hole in addiction or whatever. It's an inevitable pit that you'll keep digging, digging, digging. It's a black hole. You'll keep falling. It doesn't always end it. And the other thing I can tell you is wherever you ended your addiction, no matter how many years, you're off you five, six, seven, you're right back to where you last stopped. So it's a, for me, it's about surrender and understanding that, man, 
I don't need it. The fact that I didn't need it, I got to that point, then it was my mission where the Red Wing had already, it's in me for life, right? Always has been since I was a kid, right? But now I put the plant on because it's about the option. It's about the truth. And if there's more people out there, right, so they don't have to go through what I did. Because I don't believe, I don't believe, I believe there's maybe 1% of the population that can go through that pain or whatever because it's, it, it, it had to fight. Had to fight. Had to decide to fight because I didn't want to fight. And I'm glad I did. And now you can't stop me. And now I just, look at I surround myself with military, with MMA guys, with, right? With all these guys that, I, so I don't have to fight by myself. That's the whole thing. I'm not alone. I think that is the perfect point that we, we talk about, like, now that we're out of the NHL and we bring in Nick to the equation and we bring in all, all like, what's next. It's because hearing the stories, it's amazing that the DMAC that got you in all that is the DMAC that got you out of it, but you had to have the right people and environment and energy around you. But that same fight in the chest got you through that. And now you've found the right people that if guy, if that energy is guided in a direction that is beneficial <laughs> for your future and your brand and your products, your the sky is the limit, right? See it, bud. So I think that's what we do. I think, so how did you meet Nick? You know, talk about the connection because obviously someone that's as passionate and energetic as you, there had to be some sort of a spark for you to say, I will trust this man and bring him into, you know what? He belongs on DMAX team. I think that's a perfect next it's, step. It's not even, it got to the point. And, and, and let me comment because here's the, here's the, jo- and in my life, it's always, I got to look for the cynical because my God has my sense of humor. So it's always, there's always some little backhand slap or something in there because it's a fight that you said it was DMAC that got me out. No, it was Darren McCarty because Darren McCarty is the one that has always got me to the place in in the role of DMAC, which is like the wrestler playing the character, right? But it's the Darren McCarty all so now but it took because I never thought that, right? Till you till you said that, but I it's developed into that, but it's the real Darren McCarty through and through, which is the DMAC. In fact, you know, just before I start with Nick, you're gonna find out if the DMAC still got it October first in Fenton at the freaking that the death match pay per view. That's what I'm saying. I'm getting back in the ring, and I will bleed, and I will whatever. But there's a, there's a reason, and there's a purpose. And for me, it's about I gotta let D Max been tied up too much. I gotta let him out. I mean, Darren just can't deal with this guy anymore. I mean, he needs to get the rage out. But so to your point, so I'd probably I'm gonna say about 2014, um, and then and I date everything to my, so. The two dates of my life that I date everything around, March 26, 97, right, which is the Red Wing, and I, also my sobriety date. So I And I know this because I've drank with Nick before. So that means that we've played at a golf tournament. So we first met at a Charlie Sanders golf outing probably about seven years ago with him and his bunch of buddies that we played. It was about that. A bunch of buddies, Nordy, Miles of Golf, and and we got grouped together, and it was one of these that it felt like I was playing with my buddies at home. Like, just the camaraderie and not even knowing. And, and we were paired together, and, and, and we just, it was just the goofy. And at the time, Nick was repping a sock, uh, the compression sock. Yeah, we're through a prosthetic order. Prosthetic order. Or so, so, I mean, like, everything, it's, it's like, oh, what do you do? Like that? And he's like, dude, yeah, check this, like this. And I, dude, he set me up. I had, and I used to, because I'll wear long socks, different colors. It's part of my golf outfit, right? Like, this way I like to rock. So we, we just started like that. And, oh, this, and, you know, played some golf and just sort of, like, started, you know, I mean, there was a year there where we played every Friday morning uh, at Cattails, our first tee time off. And, and, you know, so we just became, you know, buddies. And I'd, I'd sort of started Grind Time, which was my podcast, and, you know, was sort of doing that. But I was also in between. My wife's father was sick, so I, my sobriety and a lot of stuff was in Clearwater, Florida between 2015 and 18. But I remember the day because we just got done golfing. And we're sitting in the car, and we always used to park next to the wood, right? Obviously lazy, so we back and right up, and we pull right out. And I sat there, and I go, bro, I, I got it. We got to have, like, a real talk for a minute. Because I was contemplating, and this was, like, November December 2018, and I was like, 
I think that was around when it was, or maybe it was oh. before that. But I was, I, I came back then from Florida. But I said, I said, dude, I said, listen, this is the, this is the only per. This was not a job that was gonna be. Hey, can you do that? Gonna, no, this was his job, or I wasn't coming back, pretty much. And I said, bro, with everything going on, and you know, like you, you know, you're one of my best buddies, and you know, we just click, and you know, I'm like uncle to his daughter Quinn and like the family and Big Al his dad and you know it's a fan like I feel part of the family right it, it really does and uh, I said to him I said with everything going on and I want to you know sort of do this but I can't do it without you I can't do it without you because what Nick had brought to my attention over that first few years was it came how similar the military mentality and the athlete mentality was about their their brothers and about we we always would talk how can we help how can how can you use me to help right that's always been the conversation so when i said that if i come back because i want to re-engage like and and it's the same conversation i i want to i want to get back into life in Detroit, which I had to take a step away from, and and I want to go hard, and I want to go hard in everything I want, but I need somebody, and I need you, not somebody, I need you to help me along the way, because, and then, the, so it was evolution, he, so he said yes, reluctant, <laughs> it wasn't really reluctantly <laughs> until, like, a few times later, but it's just, and I said that, <laughs> brings up, he said that today, I, did, I bring up a small thing like this where, I'm I'm getting ready to do my eleven to one show on Woodward Sports Network, so I'm going through my my emails and I check my calendar to see where the address was here. And I look and I got seventeen new freaking. And I said to Aaron because Aaron was with me, and I was like, "Oh, it looks like Bayoff and who's from the Red Wings and <laughs> Nick could talk because there's like seventeen Red Wing things coming up." But but that's the simplicity of. Like I tell everybody, Nick at Darrymccarty dot com is where you need to go to find out and whatever else it is. So I'll throw it over to Nick, but, but, but that was, it wasn't, it was, it was, he was the only person for the job that was open for him if he wanted it. And so that's almost three years ago. And I mean, he could talk about like he, I'll, I'll lead him into this because people ask Nick Antonucci, what's it like managing Darren McCarty? And what does Nick Antonucci say? Herding cats. <laughs> herding cats. 100%. Have you ever tried herding cats? You can't do it. <laughs> well, you can, but it's good. He ah, does. He does. He does the greatest job, and I and and sometimes I know that I can be dif- difficult by different things. But here's the one thing: when Nick says no or not now or put your attention on here, it's not a question. I may. I, if if it's if it's nothing serious, I may bust his balls and whine and say, oh, well, yeah, you know, but not in that. Because, and here's the whole thing. I'm a year, the COVID really put yeah. me back a year and a half. I sat, and the COVID for me, because I didn't, I sat at home. I was radio silent. I was just, and I just learn to be by myself and enjoy it and more so that 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 covid allowed me to be able to spend time with myself you know when you don't like yourself you always have to be around other people that's all i'm saying yeah so let's shift it over to nick and nick so you know you see this guy that was you know he's known across the nation he has a very powerful brand like people know who darren mccarty is he's trying to rebuild his life he's transitioning to a new stage he has to like recreate identity outside of the nhl league but with all that power you know what i mean to show the world this passion the passion that sits next to you and across from me i mean he is just radiating that energy he was radiating the energy out on the mats so what was it about him that really made you go you know what there's something here and then how did you guys start to formulate a game plan and like what steps have you done and then what are we leading into like you know what is the world going to see out of Darren McCarty's brand sure so you know when you have you have DMAC and who everybody knows and the videos and the appearances and this is the person that they see but I you know spent so much time with them one-on-one mostly on the golf course where I see this completely different side I didn't grow up playing hockey it was the only sport I didn't play couldn't afford it so we don't talk hockey I don't, we, I've never asked them like, uh, Hey, in this game, I got nothing. 
it. <laughs> so we never talk about it. It was like me with golf earlier. Right. So, like, you know, I don't bring it up, and he's probably relieved. He doesn't need to talk about it all the time. Um, so that's kind of how this relationship kind of started. Um, and then with, with Darren, I really want people to see that other side. There's a huge side for the, the mental space. Uh, mental health is huge. Um, one of the biggest reasons why we became close was the correlation between veterans and athletes. And on its face, it seems kind of strange. Like, I don't understand how these two could even be similar. So Darren, everything he did, four cups, he's with these guys. He experienced moments no one else will ever experience. And then one day it's over. And then you go home and there's no direction. There's what do I do now? And you get into a weird space. Uh, same, especially with the military. You're going through life-changing moments with, with these men and women. And then one day either you get orders to go somewhere else or, you know, your time's up, you go home, and then that's kind of it. You know, guys that you lived with, you know, my roommate, um, I call him a roommate, where we, we were this close to each other for four years. We lived together, we deployed together, always. And then one day it's just gone. And it's a very weird experience. Um, miss that brotherhood. So that's kind of where we connected a lot on and having those experiences. So we took that and wanted to expand on it. And how can we kind of help, you know, help with the mental health and help with veterans. Um, we had a good friend of the show. His name is Dan O'Connor, who two young kids buried. He called himself the luckiest person in the world. And he, one morning he didn't wake up. So Darren and I being really into golf, like we want to have, you know, do an outing, let's do it in Dan's honor. And it started small and, and got bigger. And, you know, the, the second year it got even bigger. So we created this, uh, this nonprofit, uh, Operation Valhalla, which helps um, military members, veterans, or their families who come on hard times for whatever the reason may be. So um, like we were talking about when they get out, it's it can be tough. I mean, hell, I wanted to get back in when I first came out because you're lost. You don't know how to deal with this stuff. Um, started going to school, and, and I remember sitting in like a sociology class at Oakland University, and these young kids are fighting and talking about you know the war and their thoughts, and I'm sitting in the back just fuming, and not because they were right or wrong, but it was this conversation of you know they think they know what they're talking about. I'm like, you guys are young kids. I was there. Not saying that, you know, you should believe in the war or we should, because I, I never think war is a good idea. you got to support the people that are there. So it was tough. It was tough for a while, for sure. But we created this charity to kind of help, and it's been growing and growing and growing. And, um, you know, it's something near and dear to both of us that we want to keep going, for sure. Operation Valhalla. Operation Valhalla. That's awesome. Is there social media links, a website? Is there things like if people are listening to this and they're like, man, this is a stellar project. We want to support this. We like the energy. We like what we're hearing. How do people get in touch with you or how do they support the project directly? Absolutely. So you can go, you know, all social media at Operation Valhalla will be on there. Uh, emails nick at darrenmccarty.com. You want to be a part of it. Donations. We got great team of sponsors that are helping um you know last year we filled up uh, an, a, a, we had a lot of people we ran out of golf 256 carts. i think yeah so which is massive and and everybody had a really good time but it generated a lot of money to help uh you know the michigan warriors who we were um um you know sponsoring this year there's a group of hockey players vets in, in livonia so portions of them portions to a couple other families um but it's, it's, you know, it turned into, hey, let's try and golf to, well, now Dan passed away, let's make this into something. And it's just kind of kind of grown from there. Now, is grind time still going and is an active thing? Or, like, what are the current things that you would say Darren's brand is most involved in? Like, what does he have coming up that, you know, fans, supporters, you know, maybe future fans, even if they weren't fans of him during the NHL days, what are the things that you guys are actively working on that is, like, the reinvention of Darren? Before before Nick starts is that you got to understand, right, is this is a perfect example, <laughs> right, where you put – he will implement – these are called, uh, like – he does these for me, right? Where I tell everybody, where he tells me, this is what, if you're looking to get a hold or anything to do with me, go and you forget Nick at DarrenMcCarty.com, right? Go to DarrenMcCarty.com. 
Just go to DarrenMcCarty.com. You can find out whatever it is as far as, because the one thing is if you don't tell me what, tell me who, you get, get me to that link, get to that link, and I can help you whichever way you want to go. It's just whatever way that we can help, whatever sure. questions you want. Like I said, <laughs> I used to say, I'm not here, uh, I'm not here to argue. I'm here to, for what do you mean by that? No, I'm here to fight or answer your question. <coughs> <coughs> oh, ooh, held that one. Yeah, off. it's, uh, uh, depends how much time you have for all the stuff that he's <coughs> coming out. But I'll throw a couple things. So, DarrenMcCarty.com for sure. Uh, we had a merch site that, that launched earlier this year, which is constantly updating. Um, you know, Darren does a show, Woodward Sports, between, you know, 11 and 1, Big D Energy with Neil Rule and Joy Bell. WJR on Friday nights from 7 to 8, the Darren McCarty show. We Sean have, Legion, yeah. uh, you know, the Slapstick Comedy Tour, slapstick which is comedy tour. cranking out throughout Michigan starting up in October. So, um, and then uh, Grinder, the band, is uh, <laughs> popping its head back out. So there's uh, there's all the different things. And then plus, you know, all the, all the different things. I do Wrestling Perspective podcast with Dimitri Young, former baseball player, P.D. Williams, two-time uh, Impact champion, Dennis Farrell, and uh, Lars Fredrickson, lead singer of Rancid, who's CM Punk's best friend. So, How do you keep all this in line? Because it sounds like this is so incredibly multifaceted. Like, the amount of different things that you guys have going is incredible. And I then mean, a whole cannabis line. Yeah, I was going to say, and we brought. haven't even talked about the CBD. That's the, that's the number one, right? Like we're, because that's where it starts and ends. With the, yeah. at, the end of, at the end of it all... If you make me make one decision, I will chase this plant around wherever it is yeah. to help. And you will never see me on a video, whatever do it to be out there promoting. So that's where it all starts. And and the biggest thing is, like I said, the see, it's about I, I answering people's questions and coming out with with the own stuff. So the CBDs and, and you all that. Personally, experience the results. I mean, you're a general- I no. I mean, you anybody who knows the story goes it. I live by it, and I have the ability. I was always one of the things that I was told by my dad was, if you don't like it, do something about it. So I'm I'm one that's gonna talk about it, and if I tell you I'm gonna do it, I'll probably do it twice, just to reiterate it. You know, just I gotta come back in and stamp it down. But I mean, like bottom line, I. I I'm not accountable for anybody else, but I'm accountable to me, and my word is my bond. So if I tell you I'm going to do something, hence March 26, 97, you're going to do it. I'm going to do it. But I understand because I'm looking at a guy that's the same way. I'm looking yeah, at it's... I'm looking at a room full of guys that that, and that's the whole thing is that I try to surround myself with people now, right? And all my right is that, is that everybody and and in order how do you keep it because. He does a great job because it's a team, right? Not just us, but, you know, Big Haas and Aaron and and, and the, the, the different facets to different things because people have the responsibilities and they know. And, and what I love is when, if, if I mess up the communication line, okay, well, I, my name's at the top. You know, deal with it, boys. But the fact that the fact that they do it and then they'll bitch and then I'll, I won't do it again, right? Because I have a tendency to call them. And if you're married, you have these uh, these wife holdovers where, you know, like she'll throw something on you. Hey, on Sunday, I need you to do this, right? And then I'll have to put it in there just in case or whatever. And then Nick will go, that's uh, not on the schedule. Or not that. It's like, why isn't it on the schedule? Because Boogie will be booking stuff and you'll go, well, it was on the schedule. No, it's not. So then it'll come back to me. So when that happens, then I will regroup it. But everybody works together. Yeah. I'm sure it's just like in here. So I'm sure you're you're a very meticulous person then. You're very organized. You're very probably military type that yep. regimented this is how we are going to execute a game plan no spec. to yeah. develop no success. Spec. Yeah, 100% because, I mean, in the military, you know, Ronnie knows, you know, Josh knows where there's a – there's a you don't have to be creative yeah. in the military. It's this is the SOP. This is what you follow. And if you do this correctly – What's the SOP? Standard operating procedure. Okay. So for at the us, very end, for us infant uh, civilians, civilians. <laughs> civvies. Uh, right. So at the end of that, you know what the game plan is. It's really easy to follow. Once that starts veering off track, that's when you hold people accountable. Like, no, nah, you didn't. You didn't do it. If you'd have just done this, this wouldn't have happened. So it, it's. Uh, there's all, some, that's the accountability line, right? Because yeah. if I'm, I preach karma and accountability. 
and whatever else. But if I say it, anything I say, that's the difference. I talk a lot and stuff, but I have to hear myself. So if I say it, I have to do it because I can't not do it to lead by example. You're speaking in the universe and now you have personal responsibility right. and accountability because you're putting it out there. And he's going to hold you to it. And, and that's, that's the best part, right? And that's what you need. Oh, yeah. I'm su- like, he'll text me like, oh, this event is this day at this time. And then I get other information. And then I go through the text and I screenshot it and circle it. I'm like, what? And he's like, I screwed up. I'm like, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I might need that every yeah. now and then. With that You screwed up. You screwed up. You yeah. screwed up. No. Here's a screenshot. All right, I might have screwed up there, right? And then let's move on. It's okay. What did oh, we yeah. learn? What did we learn? Right. And then we and, – and, and it's really not that – like it – it's just like sort of the system, and it's and why does it work? Because it's this like the middle specker. It's just like routine, and why wouldn't it be? I'm so routine. I'm so routine, like dude. Like I, if you give me a certain schedule, there's a pattern of what how I do things and what. And it, and the beauty is, is that the people that support and love me understand is that when it's. When it's something that that needs to be tweaked, they come to me and say, "Hey, you know, it's not this isn't working the best. Can we do it this way?" Absolutely. Or if it's something where they go, ah, "I'm gonna, I'm not gonna pick, you know, fight this hill. I'm not gonna pick this hill to fight because whatever. It's just whatever. He's a goof." So, yeah. as his manager and as someone that sees the power of the brand and the energy that he brings to the table and the diversity that he brings. What would you say if you could give me a couple big picture goals? Like, what are we trying to build with Darren McCarty? Like, what, as his manager, you you have a vision for the future. What do you see him becoming, or like, what direction? What what is the end game here? What is the goal you're working towards? So it's it's funny. So there's the there's the standard answer for that, and then there's the answer that Darren and I said from day one of the goal is to just pick up and go play golf anywhere we want in the world. Mm-hmm. Like that. That's the, the the end goal is to be able to. To be in a position to say, "Hey, where do you, where do we want to play golf this week?" or, or to be able to say, "Hey, Wednesday, Thursday, we're going, see what Ronnie's doing. We're going to go down to Pinehurst, or do whatever like that, or we're going to go do some." And the big thing is, it's not about. It's like, how can we do these things and incorporate and include everybody else and and make those experiences? But right. I, I'm I'm flat straight. Right where my goal is in the near future, hopefully sooner than later, I but it's going to happen is that I will have a tour bus with all the studio that I need to record and to be able to travel around this great state to not only promote everything, but to be in front of people and to be able to talk to people. And so that I can get grind time back up to be able to have you sitting in the butt to go wherever it is and say, hey, you got, you know, 30 minutes, an hour, come on, let's cut a story. And to be able to have all that access with all the stuff, like, I bet you, honestly, people get, five percent of all the stuff that i want to show them right you know what i mean like and and that's but but it's also too right that's my opinion right everything is nick tells me you're right you're absolutely right but time and a place so now it's he knows like i tell him all the time this is what i want this is what i want this is where this is my goal this is what i want is whatever and so he he doesn't poo poo it or whatever he puts it to wherever he needs to put it to know okay because it's a it's a bit of a juggling act when you know you could take somebody like darren the name the experiences and we could completely put him in a situation or change everything about him and just sell it as off his name here let's put you here in this hundred percent we we don't we can't do that so we we kind of find these these moments where we want to get where we have to go, but we also can't change Darren. Man, we just, don't want to change Darren. Just the authenticity of the answer that you gave me was like the best response you could have possibly said versus some generic, we're going to do A, B, C, D. No, no, but it's the truth. The authenticity That's of the number one. Yeah. You know, like that right there is – that is proof in the pudding that you have the right team around you. When you have that type of authentic communication and then you have structure and regimented routines and accountability and personal responsibility, that is how great things are built. Right. You know what I mean? And, and man, sitting across from you guys today, I'm inspired and I'm like, man, I'm going to be following the story. I'm going to be following this climb up. Well, I hope that you're I part of it. that. 
You know, I, I hope yeah. that this starts and to be part of it from everything that you've got. And this is our conversations before, and not only with how <clears throat> in a limited conversation I see what you do. How, how, because I'm always looking to say, how does this impact my, because you got to believe, like, so the DMAC character, right, which is, for lack of a better term, my Hulk Hogan or my Stone Cold Steve Austin, right? But it's, but, so I'm always looking for the storyline. I'm always looking, how does this, with all the things we got going, because right. it's about the people. So how do we get, because, it, like, look at what you have here with what you've built so that's the inspiration to me because if i tag a, it's the same thing as we're just hitching the wagons to things that are already there and instead of everybody doing it solo we're getting together that's what because here's the one thing i want everybody to know out there the world that they tell me on tv and in the media even, and i know that i'm a part of the media is not the world i choose to live in this right here is the world i choose to live in and i will fight with with the people around me, right, and the ones that we collect, the Grind Time family, the Operation Vault, whatever you want to call it, because that's the world that I believe and choose to live in, and that's the one worth fighting for, for people that, like, you guys. And and then and that's the whole thing. And slowly but surely, because there's more people out there, and we collect them and everybody at the story and understand it's just we've all we've all have a past, but it does not define who you have to be today. Right. And honestly, your past makes your story way cooler. I mean, it's I love hearing stories of people that, you know, had rough times that most people would have quit or they faced some obstacle that most people wouldn't get over or whatever it was, and then they rebuilt themselves. That makes your story See, better to me. You know, what, like, Absolutely. and that, that's where mine is, and I don't, because mine's a huge double dip, right? Mine is I've got there, fell, got back, fell harder and now we're just shooting the moon. That's, That's right. the roller coaster of life, man. You know what I mean? So just, Nick, as the manager, anything that you'd want to pitch or shout out or talk about that's coming up or anything else that you think we should include in this uh, podcast, just anything to follow, support, you know, watch out for, be at this event, anything like that. And you know what? We can obviously clip this and, and show it to everyone. Yeah, absolutely. So... DarrenMcCarty.com is probably the best way to get, a, a, you know, to find out what's going on, where he's going to be, different appearances. We're updating the calendar. We're updating the website. Um, there's so much going on. So when you go on it and there's just 40 tabs across the top, like that's just what it is. Welcome to my world. Um, social media, you know, follow the real Darren McCarty, uh, Instagram, Facebook, have updates of everything that's going on, the, the comedy tour and, um, you know, especially with the golf outing with Operation Valhalla that we do every year, get in early because it filled up in three days, two days. That's your hey, listen. I put the pressure on them because last year after COVID, and shout out to uh, our friends at Tanglewood and stuff for last year putting together a tournament in like three weeks that he had. He gave him six months and he sold it out in three days. So just need time, you know. Yeah. Just need a little bit of time. Yeah, I know, and it was awesome no, it was because that's we. The grind time, the grind time family outing is was the third annual this year, and two hundred. I think we had fifty eight or fifty nine foursomes, and whatever. And that's my favorite time of the year because I don't have to play, right? But I get to stand there in the middle and say hi to everybody and thank everybody and and the history that I have with some of the people that maybe I haven't seen but have supported, you know, throughout. That's what it's all about, you know. What I mean, and, and we invest in people. I'm, I'm, and you know what? I don't really care where you've been is where you're going. Where are you going? Yeah, it, it's funny. You know, the, one of the big reasons I tell people this a lot is why it works so well with Darren is because of how he is with fans. He's the only celebrity that I think I've ever met where he will talk to everybody. He will see people staring at him and he acts like he doesn't know and then turns around and asks them if they want to get a picture together. I've seen it happen a hundred times. Very first time we ever played golf together, I hear the same March 26th story 20 <laughs> times. And I'm now I'm getting irritated. And I'm like, are you serious? This is, dude, what is going on? How could you not be pissed off all day? And he goes, how would you feel if somebody was reliving one of the greatest experiences you've ever had all day? I was like, that'd be kind of awesome. Yeah. So then I got it. I, it makes sense. Never seen him turn down an autograph. Never seen him be a dick to a fan. Because if he was, this shit wouldn't work. 
But I'll hold you accountable, before. though. So so if you're rude. 100%. I don't like rude people. But I'll call you out in front of everybody for being for not acting. And, and sometimes it's a misunderstanding where people don't understand mm-hmm. that they're not. They don't do it on purpose. And I don't do it. To, I only try to be Dick Mac if you make me. Right. Right? <laughs> but, the perfect, perfect rule for Mac. If you guys are having a conversation and he's no longer talking, back up. I swear to God. That's it. You're going to get punched in the face. Yeah. I swear. Yeah. It's when he stops, you're like, uh, all right, let's too figure quiet. out what's going on. Hey, as long as he can hear me from across the room, you don't right. know how many times. If he can hear my voice, but then he'll hear me go silent because somebody else will be talking, he'll come back. Good, bud? Yeah. Yeah, good. you good? All right. Oh, no, we're good. I just listened. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I've seen and, and it took me a few times to wonder, everything all right over yeah. here? Yeah, oh, yeah. But we're big sometimes self- I will listen. We're big on self-awareness. Yeah, self <laughs> You have a real connection, you know what I mean? And that's someone that understands another human being, and those are the people you need by your side. That, you know what? I, and I am grateful to all the Grind Time family. And uh, and whenever I think of that, I think about, uh, you know, like the, the Tammies and the Ellens Dora, and the Ellen, Doras yeah. and, and the ones that, that, you know, come and support no matter. Like, so, so whatever, just the, the, it means a lot, you know, to, to have because these are friends. These are fam- the Grind Time family members and it's take to take pride in it. And you know what? I don't know what you got going on, but... Uh, you can be a part of the grind time family. You just gotta have that compassion, like we do for our other people. Man, I knew it right away when you were saying family, family, family. If you walk around this building and you talk to anybody, they say the same thing. Man, Absolutely. this is my family. This is my squad. Blood doesn't, you know. No, give you us can't that choose same. your blood, bro. Right. 100%. You choose your family. That was just by birth. But you know what? The people that are there for you, that have loyalty, that want to see you succeed, that aren't intimidated by your success, that want to propel you to the next level. Those are the type of people. Wu-Tang mentality, bro. Definitely. One gets out, we all get out. Why? That, that, that's the whole thing. Like, it's not about, it's whatever. Who deserves it? Because that Southern New Hampshire University commercial is so true. Talent is distributed evenly. Opportunity isn't. I want everybody who wants to put the work and get the opportunity to succeed or fail like I was given. Right? Because I'm an underdog. But am I really? No. Because you can't make, you can't program, you can program somebody with lack of talent to learn and have a bit to, to get better, but you can't determination or or just a matter of fact. Work ethic. Can't try work but, ethic. But it's, it's, it's to the point, and this is where, and I always, you know, I hate to, to do this when talking about the military but it's the mentality and we've talked about and I'll bring it up because we've talked about it it's that when you go out knowing that you could die anytime you take a bullet but not you care but that's has nothing to do with what you're doing you're doing your job whatever it is and if it's your day to take a bullet for your buddy then then that's not even a question well that's what it always is yeah especially being in those situations for me personally it was never um, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm going to go out there and, and we're, you know, we're getting shot at or whatever the case may be. And I'm doing it because I'm serving my country. That was the last thing, farthest thing from my mind. It was always protecting the people around me and my, it, my, my immediate guys. That's who I'm concerned about. My platoon, my squad, whoever's out there. That's the only thing that we're thinking about. Yeah. Take care of the little things and the big, big things will take care of Scotty themselves. Scotty Bowman, hundred percent. I was say, I think I repeated that back to you from from you earlier. <laughs> but yeah, no, one hundred percent, man. So DarrenMcCarty.com is where all the magic goes down. People need to check it out. They need to support it. They need to join the join the family. You know what I mean? Be a part of what you guys are doing. Uh, you know, truly an honor having you in the studio today. Thank you very much, Nick. Thank for you for here. having us. You know, and uh, just Darren, anything else that you'd like to capture in this moment in time that we will have forever? We'll ask Nick the same question. If not, we'll wrap this thing up. I'm just going to say in my 50th year, I'm happy to adopt the Scorpion fighting style as we move forward. So look out. MMA and you know they got forty MMA guys and a and a pro wrestler on the roster. Here we go. No, I look forward to everything we got going in the future, bro. It's an absolute honor and privilege. I'm proud of you, you know, because your story about where you started. But if you build it, they will come, like you said. And you know, we just, to my opinion, we just found uh, more grind time family members. Absolutely, excellent. Yeah, I'm looking forward to where this is gonna go. And it's, it's, you know, if it works out the way we want it, it's going to be amazing. And if it doesn't, at least we'll know that we gave it everything we had and we, we put all our effort into it. And, and um, 
but I'm 100% confident it's going to be it's going to be great. You know, sky cliche, sky's the limit, but it's it's true. We just keep collecting. And and here's the and one thing, going. the last thing. We're not in a hurry. It's all about foundation. The big thing too is that what I would encourage is like everything else that I've ever built or whatever was not on straw or wood or whatever, but the number one conversation when we had about it was the object is to be able to pick up and go golf wherever we want, whenever we want, but the foundation has to be mortar. Mm -hmm. So we're slowly but surely building and stuff, but we're not in a hurry. We're going to get where we're going, and it's about enjoy the journey, guys. The last thing I'll say destination's an oasis. What do I mean? You're a human being. That means you want to achieve your goal. Then you want more. I want to make the NHL. I want to win the Stanley Cup. Then one, two, three, four, whatever like that. So destination's an oasis. It's about the journey. It's a train ride. What train you on? You like your eating cabin? You like your sleeping cabin? You like your entertainment cabin? Then just go for the ride. Enjoy the stops. And then, you know, what are you going to do? Put the work in to, to get where you need to go. Absolutely stellar. That is a perfect way to end the episode. Again, truly an honor to sit here with you today. Thank you very much, Darren. Absolutely. Thank you very much, Nick. Thank Appreciate you, man. it. Appreciate you. And we'll wrap this up.